Okay guys, part two of the wilderness and survival skills woodcraft or bushcraft knife challenge. I have the last few knives. There's a couple of knives I already sent back. Um, so I wanted to do the review with a pitcher or pictures of the knives. I'm going to use Big Mike's pictures because they're better than mine. Um, uh, I'm sorry I have to come to that, but I ended up deleting the file with the reviews already on it, so I'm redoing the video. So, let's start with the Nightman knife that was sent in. Alright, I sent Nightman's knife back a few weeks ago because he was being deployed, serving our country. Um, so, and he wanted to take the knife, and after using it, I know why he wanted to take it. The Nightman knife was a very well-designed knife. Not your typical bushcraft knife again. Um, uh, but it was a good job. It came with a Kydex sheath. Not the prettiest Kydex sheath, but it was very functional. Um, it held the knife really secure. All right. Also had a little fire steel loop. You know, with a little three eighths inch, three eighths inch fire steel attached to it. Um, uh, so it did a good job. Also had that drop belt loop, so you didn't have to use a. Uh, you didn't have to keep the knife riding high, hurting your hip, or anything like that with a tech lock. I like the belt loop on the Kydex. So good job there. All right, back up here to the knife. Had a wide blade, all right, which was great if you like the extra belly. Um, uh, you could choke up on it in the pinch grip nicely. Um, the fit and finish wasn't great, but it was good. Um, uh, the, you know, couldn't, there was no gaps in the handles or anything like that uh, with the tang. That was all flush and nice. You had a, a nice orange liner in there. I think it was orange G10, I'm not sure, you know. Don't quote me on that. Um, you put these finger indents in there, which I'm not crazy about, but it, it did not hurt the comfort of the knife. It was great in the hammer grip. Um, uh, couldn't, you know, couldn't complain at all. In the chest lever grip, you did ramp this area here for your thumb, which made it very nice and comfortable. Um, uh, in the reverse grip, it wasn't the best because of that finger indent right there. Was you know, would dig into my palm right about there. Um, uh, but it wasn't bad. All right. In use, it cut really well. Um, uh, had a good grind, a little bit of shoulder, but it, you know, a good mixture of sharp and tough. That you could see more of the fit and finish. You know, um, I had no real complaints about the knife. You know, for a bushcraft, woodcraft knife, I wanted a little carver or anything like that, and I would have preferred that. You got the spine nice and sharp. Okay, and it was great at striking a fire steel. Um, uh, I'm not sure the thickness, I think it was like 316, so uh, you know, the, the review when we post it um, will have the exact specs on it. Um, uh, and it was good. It was a good batoner. Full 5 inch length, got through big stuff, little stuff, no problem. Um, I don't know if you can see back up here. You had some thumb grooves put in. Um, good job, you know, wasn't perfect thumb grooves, but it wasn't uncomfortable, wasn't choppy at all. Um, uh, good job on that. All right, well, you rounded the butt area, which is nice and comfortable. You made it nice and comfortable if you were going to palm the butt or anything like that. Um, uh, there was no big, you know, you just had plenty of room for your hand there, so this area never dug into your hand. It was plenty, the handle was plenty long. Um, small pins in there, you know, but the knife was held secure and strong. Oops, that's it. Go back up. Um, so all in all, I really liked the, the Nightman knife. It was a good performer. Wasn't best. Um, uh, you know, the the edge, like I said, was kind of thick, but for that style of knife, it was it was really well. Um, there was some contour here, which was nice. Really locked your hand in. Um, uh, did all in all, it was a pretty all in all, it was a really good job. Um, uh, pretty pretty good performer. Good job, knife man. Another knife I don't have to do the video review is Scott Gossman. Now I've owned a lot of Scott work. I've handled a lot of uh, Scott's knives, and they were they're all pretty much tanks. I mean, they're they're workhorse knives. Um, uh, you know, in a woodcraft, bushcraft knife, I'm not looking for anything real heavy. Um, we've got a few of those types of knives, but, but this one wasn't bad. It was actually very comfortable. Um, uh, let me see if there's another picture here. His sheath. Let's talk about his sheath real quick. What a beautiful job on the sheath. Very strong leather. I don't know if it was eight nine ounce. Um, uh, but it was very, very strong. A great finish on it. Good even stitches, double stitch. Um, beautiful work on the sheath. Had a great belt loop. 
rip is in there and stitched in there, you know, and it locked the knife in very securely. I love leather sheaths, and this one was pretty much a perfect one. A great job on the sheath. Um, the handle, all the edges were perfectly rounded. There was no sharp point. Um, uh, it was it was contoured. Let's see if there's a fine shot here. Yeah, here you go. It was slightly contoured. Nothing too abrupt. Very comfortable. Um, a thick stock, full convex ground knife with a secondary bevel, as you see there. And Scott's another guy who's going to put that secondary bevel to, for added toughness. Um, the knife cut pretty good. wasn't the best cutter. Um, uh, wasn't nearly, you know, at the bottom in the cutting performance. Um, uh, it, but it cut pretty good. The shoulders kind of, you know, kind of impeded and push cut through cordage. wasn't a big deal. It got through. It just needed a lot more, for, you know, a lot of force, you know, and more force than some of the other thinner knives. All right, but it was sharp, cut paper, no problem, cut wood, and whittled wood pretty good, not great. Had that willow leaf um, style blade, gave you a lot of belly, nice curved edge for slicing through things, um, uh, slice through little saplings, um, push cut through with a sapling, a bent slap, sapling with ease, good job. It was a great wood splitter, you can see the fit and finish again there, just beautiful, took all the glue out of there, um, uh, that was maker's mark right there. I think. Let's make our mark. Looks nice. The other side, I think it says A2, which is the, the steel he used. You know, beautiful package. Some, you know, the the choice of Macarta color handle. Some don't like. It doesn't bother me any. And Scott likes it. He made this knife with a left-handed sheath because he planned on keeping it for himself. And I could definitely see why. It's about time he made a knife for himself. This is my boy Gene. Gun knife nut on the forum. G3 knives. Look at this thing. <laughs> Here is a shot. All right, the sheath. He made the sheath in like 15 minutes because he was a late entry into the knife contest. Um, so we won't talk about the sheath. It's not the greatest. So let's check out the knife. That's a quarter of an inch thick beast. And this is his belt knife that he made. It, all right, fit and finish isn't great, but let's talk about it. There's so much things going on here, texture and everything like that. It actually makes it a real cool looking knife. It's heavy. Alright, it's a lot of Carter, quarter inch thick steel. It is a heavy knife for a belt knife. Um, uh, and I was questioning how well it would cut, but I've known Gene for a while. Um, spent a lot of time out in the woods with him, and I knew how he knew how to, he knows how to use a tool, and he knows how to put an edge on a tool. So I was wanting to see, I couldn't wait to use this. This, honestly, this was my my splitter. When I had wood too big, I didn't want to baton with the other knife, I grabbed this thing and I split the hell out of stuff. This thing, even though oh, it's just about a five inch blade, batoned a crap. It would it act like a little wedge. Um, uh, it would split wood apart with no problem. And it, it's comfortable. Look at the contours. Again, that rear swell means so much for comfort. I mean, it locks your hand right in there. No hot spots. All right. All rounded, smooth edges. Alright. You can see some marks here. You know, it's, it's a good fit. You can't catch your fingernail anywhere. Okay. But it's just not the prettiest looking finish. But let's talk about function. Very comfortable in almost every grip. It's just heavy. That's it. You know, so I just gotta work out more and get used to the weight if I were to keep this. Well, great knife. Love how he put that little pot holder hook there, you know. He's a bushcraft guy, you know, always thinking a little thumb rest there. Nice sharp edges, it threw good sparks. And it cut. He got that quarter of inch thick and tapered it down to almost nothing. It cut really well. Um, uh, it cut better than a lot of other guys. And I was very, very happy to use this knife. And I'm real happy that Gene is putting out stuff like this and he's only going to get better. This is one of his first few knives he's ever made. He's not. I don't know if he's taking orders or not. He, he, I know he's wanted to make knives for a hobby for a long time. And he likes modifying the potential shown here. Great stuff, Gene. Okay, here. Okay. Sorry about the poor lighting, but what I have to work with. The sheath is by Dimitri's in Industries. Good sheath. Alright. Not the thickest leather, but very secure. Had the strap up here, so you're not going to cut it taking this out. Okay. So no worries there great design. Good stitches. And you could, when you order Andy's knife, you always give you the option of contacting this guy to get the sheath made. His name is Jason. Great guy.
guy to deal with, great, great guy to work with. Thinks he's funny, but, you know, everybody has their little issues. Anyway, let's talk about Andy's knife. Another beautiful piece of craftsmanship from Andy Roy. Fit and finish is perfect. I couldn't find any flaws to it. Alright, it's still kind of beat up from all the use he gave it, so it doesn't look as pretty as it did when we first got it, but it was beautiful. So now the blade looks well loved and well used. Alright, love the blade shape. Nice, sm small, compact knife, but it's really not that small. It's got a, I don't know, four, a little over four inch blade. He has his flat here, unfinished flat, with his convex grind. So, favorite convex grind. He, there is a secondary bevel, but he thinned it out pretty good. This knife was meant for cutting, and he did a good job. Perfectly even grind on the secondary bevel. Really nice. He got the edge really close. There were cocktails right there. Or it all the way back. A little choil area. Really like that. Has an exposed tang here, which if you're going to abuse the knife a little bit and hammer it in with a baton or something like that into wood, you know, you can take the extra abuse. You're not going to damage anything. That's where you signed it right there. Andy Roy. Good, smooth, not too profound contours. Smoothed out over here too. All right. Didn't bother me at all. Wasn't the most comfortable in his grip, but it didn't bother me at all. It was really nice, actually. Get a lot of leverage in the chest lever grip. Full fist and hammer grip, perfect. Um, uh, the spine is very sharp. It struck a fire feel excellent. Okay. Just give you some grips here. Reverse grip, very nice also. The hump, the swell here being here, really locks your blade, your hand in giving you full control of that excellent cutting edge right there. So, good work. Very strong tip. Very sharp tip. All right. Great driller. Great cutter. Definitely one of the top performers of the bunch. Again, the finish is great. There's that little signature bullseye lanyard hole of Andy. You can really tell his knives apart from everybody else, which is very good for a maker. All right. Next knife, Bruce A. Culberson. Bruce has done very well in challenges in the past, and I was interested in getting this knife in. I've never had a, actually I did use a, a Bruce Culberson knife once. It was, my, it was a small knife, and it was my knife of choice when I went up to Canada to visit with Doc Canada and KGD and some other guys. Um, uh, and I kind of took Ken's Bruce Culberson knife. It was a lot smaller than this knife. And it worked great. So anyway, sheath, beautiful house sheath. Did a good job on the edges, finishing it off. Great stitching. All right, very solid, deep sheath. Very secure. Great job on the sheath. Good package. Let's look at the knife. Oops, still got all this. I've been using this knife a lot because this is now my knife. I purchased this off proof after the competition was over. Um, uh, really liked it, so well, definitely one of my favorites. All right, like the blade shape, a lot of belly here. Okay, really get up on there. It's probably be a great skinning knife. I don't do a lot of skinning. Um, uh, what if I did? I'm sure this will work great. Good sharp spine. All right, kind of a uh, another saber, kind of convex edge. I don't know if you can see. There's a tiny micro bevel. It's not really zero, but there's a tiny micro bevel. Very very thin though, and strong. All right, this was. Definitely one of the top cutters of the bunch. Little cutting like little laser beam, excellent. See the little thumb ramps there, all smoothed out. This is probably the most comfortable handle for me of the bunch. Fat, round, every position was a pleasure to use. Love the rounded pommel. Fat, rounded pommel. For some reason, I just like that in my knife. Um, uh, but good tip. Drilled great. I think this knife just performed flawlessly in everything we put it through. And I've been using it a lot more since then. I have yet to sharpen it, and it will still shave hair. It's nice. Um, uh, it's not as sharp as it once was, but it is still sharp. So, since I bought it, I'm sure you guys know, I think really high, highly of it and of Bruce's work. Perfect fit and finish. Just pretty nice. Let's see how polished you got the bevel here. Nice and thin. I don't know if you can see it, but you got the edge nice and thin. Great work, Bruce. A little Picasso. Lay your thumb right there. Really 
to get in there for power cuts um, uh, and detail carbon. Thank you, Bruce. Mine. All right. Rick Marshan. Look at this thing. This is just pretty. You really don't even want to use it. It has that really aged look to the leather. Gorgeous work on the leather. And I mean, and solid, very, very thick, strong leather. I don't know if you can see. I've got sewn in. Good thread, you know, good sewing job. Got the rivets in there. Very, very strong. If it's a two inch belt, it's perfectly fine. Even bigger if you like. Very secure. And look at this knife. Fully forged. Beautiful grind line. A lot of work went into this knife. And you could see it when you hold it in your own hand and in good lighting. This is really a pretty, pretty knife. And I don't know if you can see that this little bevel here. He polished this convex edge. It's not really a secondary bevel at all, um, uh, but it's just highly polished right at the edge. Perfectly even and super sharp. Definitely one of the best, if not the best, cutters of the bunch. The handle is wrapped, but inside that wrap is leather, which gives it some thickness and some contour. So a lot of, you know, times I look at wrap handles and it's not, you know, it's going to be flat. It's not going to be that comfortable. This one is contoured. All right. And then he finished it off with this beautiful little Turk's head knot, which I think he just pulled that grass out of his backyard, made the cordage, and put that third head up there. Really nice finish work. This is Maker's Mark. All right, let's, in comfort, there's that rear curve right there, which I find it so comfortable. There was another knife in there in the challenge that had that. I think Gene's knife, and it made it really comfortable as well, as well as the X39 knife kind of had that. Another one of the top comfort knives. But this knife is super comfortable, very secure. You're not gonna, it's not going to turn in your hand. All right, I love this knife. All right. Even though it's beautiful, we beat on it pretty hard. Um, uh, Rick won the last couple of competitions, and uh, we kind of wanted uh, to see if it was really up to par. And wow, for a little knife, this was a tough knife. Super, super carver, great cutting edge, great edge geometry, good strong tip, and pointy and sharp. There's no guard here. You know, but this Turk set kind of acts like a guard. You're not, your hand's not going to slip off. I know guys that are a little worried about that. I'm not one of them. I prefer no guard. All right, that little Turk set kind of acts as a guard. Um, uh, good spine for striking. wasn't the best spine to strike a fire steel with, but it, was, but it did the job. It was pretty much the only thing it didn't do perfectly. Um, uh, cut perfectly, baton good. Um, the small length it made, didn't make it the best batoner, but it baton really well. Um, uh, again, rounded, pommel, right, very comfortable. You can't use a lanyard with this knife, obviously, but you don't really want to anyway. I think it will ruin the look of it. Anyway, I wound up buying this one too. <laughs> so this is now my knife as well. Marcelo doesn't steal it from me. Um, uh, so Marcelo and I are still fighting over whose knife it is. Right now it's mine. Gorgeous knife. And up there at the top performer. I don't know who won yet. Marcelo has the final scores, and I haven't even seen him. I know who I had at the top, and uh, I'll give you a hint, it's one of these last few knives you've seen in this video. But gorgeous, gorgeous knife. Thank you, Rick.